This is Steve from Boxing UK. Absolutely delighted to be joined by Willie Munro Jr. Yeah. Hey, how are you? I'm doing good, and yourself? I'm very well, mate. Be better than you. We've just been talking off camera there. Um, yeah. Don't want to start the interview on a downer, mate, but you've had your trials and tribulations this year, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. Had a few, uh, well, I had a few things happen. Obviously, we know everybody's dealing with COVID. You know, and up and down with the, the global pandemic. And then uh, mid-May, you know, me and my family suffered a house fire. So, you know, we're in, still in the process of slowly getting things back. And um, it's been a process, but, you know, it's, it's one that's sort of, I don't want to say sort of, it's one that has made us happy because, you know, after the fire for, like I was telling you earlier, about maybe an hour after the fire and we're in a hotel and we grabbed a few bit of clothes that we could and we're all just sitting around in the hotel just looking at each other like yo like out of everything that we've attached our minds and the egos to like we're more than happy you know what i mean for anything in the world just to be here you know and be safe you know all five of us so it was just it was a you know it was it was a tough situation but when you look at the, the, the what I like to call the seed of equivocal benefit, it made me and my family realize like what it really is. Good man, that's a positive way to look at it, especially in the current climate where, mate, where there's an awful lot of people in a worse position than that. Yeah, that's true. So what have you been doing so during COVID, Willie? Have you been training? Have you managed to? Keep going, because a lot of the gyms in the UK are shut and fighters have been struggling. Yeah, the only thing I have been doing really is running and a lot of shadow boxing because, like, you know, it's like that here in America, too. And, you know, uh, gyms aren't fully open. You know what I mean? Some gyms are open and then the whole face mask thing. And then the whole mass hysteria of just, like, you know, you know, I mean, being in the gym and, you know, sweat and stuff flying everywhere, so... It's been, um, I've just been, you know, as far as like staying in shape, just been running, a lot of shadow boxing. You know, uh, I've hit the gym a couple different days, but like uh, just not too fond of it right now, trying to find other organic ways to like stay in shape simply because of the nature of the situation. Good man. So obviously we're going to talk about the news while your name is being mentioned, but if you were offered a fight, are you ready to go? I'll be ready to go. I mean, the, the Canelo fight was offered, and you got to realize it's eight weeks away. Yeah. So uh, I would be ready. Yeah, I, I feel I would be ready. I think it doesn't take long. It doesn't take a guy like me long to get in shape. You know what I mean? Um, I, I don't have any bad habits as far as, like, drinking or partying or anything. So, you know, it wouldn't take – I mean, eight weeks, I would be ready. You know, we're eight weeks out now. So I got to – I pick I picked my running up over the last two weeks after they mentioned my name. So yeah. – you know, we'll call it a, a, a ten week camp. I'm I'm ready. I've been running. Good man. So, so Willie will get do as much as I can under the circumstances. Good man. I beg your pardon. Sorry, yeah. Just in getting straight into it, Canelo. Who's mentioned your name? Okay. I mean, um, our name came up from multiple sources, and you know, I'm I'm now signed to uh, Split Team Management, where you know, which is a manager who can you know play on pretty much all, you know, like just be, he's got relationships with everyone. He's not into that whole banter of, you know, I don't work with this guy. I don't work with that guy. Yeah. You know, so, um, and he has Tia Fimo Lopez, you know, and, um, you know, uh, I, I opportunity came and I was like, yo, it's been four years in the making because after I beat Rosado in 2016, they put me on, I was a co-feature when he fought uh, Liam Smith, another great fighter from the UK. Yeah, And um, the night he fought Liam Smith, I was a co-feature. And I fought Gabe Rosado. And there was a second contract that pretty much said, well, I won't say pretty much said, the contract said the winner of you and Rosado, out of you and Rosado, would get Canelo. Now, what was funny about this is I was, I was like, ecstatic that they would give me a fight with Canelo. I'm like, yo, I'm, I'm to be mentioned in that caliber, I was, I was happy. But I'm like, I have to be this guy to get to Canelo and Gabe Rosado at the time was also signed to Golden Boy. Yeah. So I know they weren't looking to do me. I know they weren't looking to do me any favors of uh, letting me win 
and and get a shot with Canelo. They were going to have Canelo fight Gabe Rosado because Gabe Rosado is a banger. He's easier for Canelo to hit. And you can take the whole Puerto Rico versus Mexico thing because everybody knows that's the biggest rivalry in boxing. Yeah. And I think that they felt Rosado was better than me. And because they gave me the fight on a short notice, I think that they thought I wouldn't be ready. So when they gave me the fight and I actually won, then the tables turned. Yeah, I was a two to one underdog fighting Rosado and, and given the time that I was given to get in get shape for get in shape for Rosado, you know what I mean? They um they they just pretty much felt that Rosado will win. And you know, I can't, obviously you know how it goes. You come in on the B side. Yeah. I won the title that night and then things changed. And like I said, I don't have the legal power to go after those guys, so I just had to take the good with the bad and say, Hey, I shot for it. You know what I mean? And I didn't get a fight until a year later when I came over to the UK. So, you know, it was tough for me to get a fight in between them. But I personally feel like since that was offered to me and it's such an arrogant way, yeah, I just feel like at this point in time, maybe I should get that opportunity because it was given to me under the terms of, well, we know you can't win. Well, I mean, I beat the odds. I came in, I won. Did so with that being said, I think, I think they owe it to me to be like, all right, you know, let's go ahead and honor a contract that we had the power to throw out because we were facing a guy like Willie Monroe who didn't have the management power or the promotional power to pursue us in any legal way. So we could just throw that out. I think right now they should go ahead and just, you know, honor that simply because of the fact, simply because of the story. Yeah. So if they did offer it, Willie, obviously you would jump at the chance. Yeah. What can you bring to the table that would give Canelo problems? Well, I think both of us have been out of the ring for quite some time. You know, him will be 10 months. For me, it'll be 15. And um, I'm sorry. Am I back? Yeah, you're back, mate. Yeah. Okay. I know for, for him, it, it's been 10 months. And for me, it's been 15. And then with the whole, I, I don't know what type of, uh, you know, um, perks Canelo has being that he probably owns his own gym and everything. You know, he probably can stay training right now, but, you know, there are restrictions on training for me. So, like I said, I have to go the more organic way and do, like, my own thing outside. But I personally think that I can – I think I have the knowledge right now of everything I've learned in between going up to fight Triple G and coming over to the U.K. to fight Billy Joe Saunders and then the layoffs and everything. I think I've gotten enough, enough knowledge of myself to know what I can and can't do and it's all about plugging it in. So yeah. with the things that I know that are detrimental to me when I fight Canelo, make sure I stay away from them. The things that are working in my favor, make sure I stick to those. You feel It's like a Rubik's Cube, you know, and, and um, some of the turns you have to make aren't the ones you want to make. But I personally think that, like, my style, maybe my style and just maybe my size, too, it could, it could be a, 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 a combination of things. I think um, – I just think I'm – I can do it. I think I can pull it off. I believe in myself that much. And obviously, we're fighting Canelo. So <laughs> he believes in himself. You know what I mean? This guy's, and you know, he's a great fighter. So, yeah. So obviously, British fans, Willie, they'll remember you mainly for your fights against Billy Joe and Golovkin. How much have you come right. on since those fights? I beg your pardon? How much have you improved since those two fights, Willie? Well, I just think the whole thing of, you know, not fighting, you know, not having the uh, the upper hand, like when they say the A side and the B side were fighting, you know what I mean? Having to bend to whatever they want, you know, in the situation just to get the fight. You know what I mean? Like, originally, people don't know, originally Billy Joe Saunders was offered a fight with me to defend his title as the co-feature to Canelo Liam Smith because yeah. they both have the same promoter, Frank Warren. But he turned me down, then he turned Rosado down, and then they were like, well, Rosado's already training for a southpaw. Let's see if we can stick Willie Monroe in there. So, you know, the whole, the, the whole thing as far as – the whole thing with Triple G and Billy Joe Saunders is that with Triple G, I got to know what it was like to be in there with a bona fide puncher, a guy that has a very high skill set and be able to know how to hold my own for, for six rounds, but – I learned something there. 
Yeah. And then with Billy Joe Saunders, I knew what it was like with the mind games, with the, you know, that having the kid punch me in the nuts and kick me in the nuts and then having people at my hotel room door and having people threaten my team. And there was actually a girl from my city that got beat up really bad over there. I know um, you guys aren't considered, I know, I guess the community he comes from are, are gypsies. So, you know, and a, and a lot of people were on my tail about that because when I said I don't like the way I was treated over there, they thought I was talking about the everybody in, you know, in the UK. Yeah. And I said I was talking about the, the community I was in. You know, we fought in the Copper Box Arena, which probably holds 4,000 people, 5,000 people. And, I mean, like, it wasn't like a big promotion like with, uh, like with Eddie Hearn, where it would have been 30,000 people and it would have been a mixture of the whole UK now, this was set in a little corner off to the side in hostile territory. So what I learned in that is to not be shooken up here. You know what I mean? To know to go in and do my job. And Canelo is a mega fighter. He's way bigger than, uh, than, than, than Saunders. So I've already dealt with that with Saunders. All I have to do is apply it now. So I think what I've learned in between the scale of that is my abilities and my knowledge of the game. So, in a word, Willie, can you beat Canelo? Because you would expect, yes. you know, you probably will know everybody would write you off, and it, there's a lot of criticism about some of the names that are getting bandied about. But right. you feel getting beaten? I mean, uh, yes. But I want to go on and say, I mean, we had a young Cassius Clay versus a Sonny Liston. And everybody told Young Cash is just don't do that. You're crazy. This guy's going to kill you. I've seen him knock a guy's teeth out with a jab, not even counting his right hand. Like, you're 22 years old. You're going to die. And Ali and Young Cash is, I can't call him Ali because his name was Cash at the time. He said, watch, I'm going to make all of y'all believers. You get Buster Douglas, Mike Tyson. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. You get Antonio Tarver, Roy Jones Jr. Roy Jones is my idol. I hate that those two moments happened, but everybody told Tara, you, man, you ain't beating no Roy Jones. Like, you came out of the Olympics at 26 years old. You don't have a bunch of upsides. You think at 20, at, at 35, when he actually fought um, Roy, you think at 35, you can actually be that guy and beat a super fighter like Roy Jones? He said, watch me. He did it not once, but twice. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. They told Sugar Ray Leonard, you're crazy for fighting Tommy Hearns. Don't let him keep his belt. You, you keep your belt. Sugar Ray said, I'm too fast. They said, nah, that dude, they call him the Cobra. He got the reach on you. He's 6'2". You're 5'10". They gave him every conceivable reason why he wouldn't win, and he said, watch me. And it took him into the 14th round, but he said he knew it. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So the thing I'm saying is to be great, you're going to have to break through. It's like a, it's what, um, what they call, I think they call it escape velocity or something like that. I heard Nip Hustle, Nip Hustle say this. It's almost like when, the, when, when a rocket leaves the atmosphere, there's a huge pressure on that ship. It can't just leave. It can't just up. Just like a plane, that's what the, the pressure you feel. So the higher you go up, the more pressure you're going to feel. I'm looking to take it to another planet because we're fighting Canelo Alvarez. Yeah. So now I got to use escape velocity. I got to be able to hear all of these things that will weigh you down and turn them in my favor so I can escape the Earth's atmosphere and do the impossible. I'm preaching to you, man. <laughs> I'm preaching to you, baby. <laughs> yeah. So, Willie, if we had to ask you out of 10, the chances that it's going to be Monroe Jr. versus Canelo, what would you give us out of 10? I'm going to say 11. Right. I'm going to speak it into existence. I'm going to yeah. speak it into existence. This has to happen. I am the complete antithesis in every way of Canelo Alvarez. This is what you call the Big Bang. That's why I told the guy that made it. If you look on my Instagram, I got a picture where Canelo, where me, they, they um, did a, 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 what do you call it, a graphic between me and Canelo. Yeah. And I said, I said name it the Big Bang. You're looking at two polar opposites. I am the complete antithesis of everything Canelo is, all the way down to fighting style, all the way down to, to he's a puncher. I'm not. I'm slick. He's kind of slick. I'm the complete opposite of him in every way. This has to happen. This is the Big Bang. 
fight and talk really. I'm I'm letting you know, man. I thought about this. I thought I'm like, yo, this has to happen. Yeah, on the, and it has to happen at this time. It has to happen now. You would expect an announcement soon, though, Willie, wouldn't you? If they're talking about a September fight. Yeah, I'm expecting an announcement soon. And in the, according to what you're telling us, in the unlikely event that it's not you, as a boxing fan, Willie, who would you like to see going against Canelo if it's not yourself? Man, I can't see nobody but myself. <laughs> but, but with that being said, with that being said, I don't know. I really don't know. He's done so much in the boxing world. I really, you, I really don't care to see another Triple G fight. But I will say, if him and Triple G fight again, is whoever wins is going to end in a knockout. Yeah. How did you think the first? It time has to win? because I saw the first two. I thought Canelo. I think a draw was – I think both decisions were pretty fair. Right. I think a draw was fair for the first one. And um, I thought he pulled off the second one simply because Triple G kept saying Mexican style come fight. And then Canelo was there fighting. And then by the time the 10th, 11th round came around, Triple G started boxing. And it's like you can't tell a man to come fight and bang, fight and bang. Then he fights and bangs so well that you say, okay, I'm going to start boxing. Now you ask to fight and bang. Let's stay true to who you are for the whole 12 rounds. So I would get why they would say, okay, um, Canelo won this one. But the first one, you know, it could have went Triple G's way or I'm okay with the draw simply because of you got A side and B side. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. And Canelo, I think at, the, at that, yeah, I mean, Canelo's a star, a mega star, a world-renowned star. So, I get the first fight and I get the decision, but they're still split in half. There's still so many fans that think Triple G won the first one. And there's a lot of fans that think he won the second one. So it's a lot of people that's up Canelo's behind. Like, look, man, there's a lot of people saying you didn't win the first or the second fight. And there's a lot of people on Triple G like, look, they're not going to give it to you if you box them. So you got to knock them out. So both guys are going to come in with the complete mind of I have to win this by a knockout. There you go. Superb analysis. There. Canelo has to get past, and in order for that fight to happen, Canelo has to get past two fights with me. <laughs> Might be a trilogy, will he? Because I know one. I know once I beat him, I know once I beat him, they're going to force the rematch. So it's always it's going to be two fights. You would be the yes side then, though. Hey, yeah, we're looking for Canelo Monroe. Too. We're looking for Monroe Canelo too, because the second one got to have my name first. We'll say Canelo Monroe right now. But Monroe Canelo too, that's going to be it. Good man. Again, I, I almost feel bad yeah, asking yeah. this. If, if it's not Canelo, you're obviously looking for a big fight. Do any of the Brits tempt you? Uh, I like John Ryder and Callum Smith as fighters. They're both good fighters, man. Uh, it's no, nah, it's really no British fighter that that tempts me right now. It's not a, you know, not really. The only one that would be tempting is after I beat Canelo with, is to get in there with Billy Joe Saunders because Billy Joe Saunders' excuse after I beat Canelo would be, I already beat Monroe. You know what I mean? So I'm better than Canelo. And, you know, you're looking at two different fighters, two different um, times. And like I said, everything I dealt with over there, I like, I wouldn't mind. My pride tells me to go get, go get Billy Joe again if he's not going to retire. He actually, he's actually, he actually inboxed me and said a few nice things. So I'm not, I'm not too, I was never mad at him for, you know, but like he, he's not as, as bad at it as he seems maybe. Yeah. We'll see. I know it's a little bit of comic value, but one of the most popular videos that concerning you, Willie, is obviously when Billy Joe's kid punched you right in the nuts. <laughs> right. <laughs> if memory serves me right, I think he came onto the scales and you patted his head and then he dug a right hand into the balls, didn't he? Well, well, this was what, this was what I thought. I saw Billy Joe Saunders bring like, and I know that, um, 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 Liam Smith, like, I don't know. I think he has a brother that's autistic or something. Yeah, he was yeah. in one of the segments and he wears autism on the back of his trucks. That's and right, I think yeah. I saw Billy Joe Saunders, I, I think I saw Billy Joe Saunders bring a kid, 
you know, with autism into the ring and like give him his props and everything. And that was really nice of Billy Joe. So when the kid hopped up on the stage, I thought it was one of those type of moments. So that's when I pat the kid on the head to say like, hey, America, I worked in a group home uh, with eight autistic young men. Yeah. And they were like some of my favorite people. And like some of them I still talk to to this day. I don't even live in New York anymore. And I still talk to them uh, via social media to this day because I became really good friends with them. So when I saw this kid come up on the stage, I thought it was one of those moments. And my heart kind of melted until yeah. I got punched in the nuts. <laughs> what did you think at that exact moment? Did it hurt? I was like, yo, I was confused. I was like dismayed. I was, I was like, this isn't happening. Like, I've already dealt with the people banging at my door the other night. I already dealt with gypsies, like, running past the, the, the workout room when I'm working out in the hotel and, like, trying, like, banging on the door, like, trying to disturb a workout. I'm like, this, I'm like, come on, man, this can't be happening. I'm punching the nuts by a kid. I didn't even know that was his son. Well, not that it's any consolation, but you'll always be forever known in the UK, even if it's only for that, will it? <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Oh, man. I knew it was something crazy when I saw it on Bar... It was on Barstool Sports, like, two hours after it happened, and it had, like, a million likes in, like, seven hours. I was like, yo, this... I can't believe my spot in history is looking like this right now. <laughs> I got punched in the nuts. Well, just to go back to the main news, Willie, you've got a chance to completely uh, have the world at your fingertips, haven't you? Yeah, and I believe it's mine. I feel like, um, you know, I feel like it's time, you know, and, and I, you know, I want to say third time's the charm, but that's kind of cliche, man. Yeah. I just, I just want to say it's my time. I just feel like it's my time. Brilliant. Uh, last word to you, Willie. Anything else? Any plans? Any chance you're coming to the UK, even if just to watch a fight? Um, I do want to come to one, once you know the whole travel ban is lifted, and you know there's no, um, you know they have the whole COVID thing under control. I actually do want to come to the UK for two reasons. I want to take my wife shopping over there, right. and I just found out I, I made a really good British fan here in America. And he told me that when I come over there, I can't ask for sneakers. I have to ask for, uh, is it tennis or? Trainers. I have to ask, huh? Trainers. Trainers. <laughs> I, can't ask, I can't ask for sneakers because I was sitting there talking to him and I said, my sneakers. And he said, yo, what are sneakers? And I was like, he said, those are trainers. And I'm like, nah, the Nike, I'm like, I know they're Nike because Nike has a shoe called the Nike Trainer. Yeah, And I said, I know they're Nike, but they're not the Nike trainers. And he just kept sarcastically saying, no, they're trainers. <laughs> so I can't. And so he told me, don't come over there and say sneakers because no one's going to know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so I want to come over to the U. I do want to come over there and take my wife shopping. Though, like it was a bunch of really, really nice stores in the UK and like, you know, women's elegance, like the, that, the Christian Louboutin and like right off the shelf. So I need that. Well, Willie, if everything goes your way, mate, you'll be coming over here as probably the most famous boxer in the world. <laughs> <laughs> for, wait, for beating Canelo or for getting punched in the nuts or a little bit of both? A bit of both over here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is hilarious. <laughs> Willie, it's been a pleasure talking to you, mate. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasures are mine. Absolute joy. We'll keep an eye on... Any breaking news? Awesome. Uh, you keep yourself safe and I hope slowly but surely you're patching your belongings back together again, mate. Awesome. You do the same. Thank you very much.